Butter and toast. Mix. Robots and tacos. Soda mix. But kids and alcohol. Don't mix. You probably heard that alcohol is bad for your brain. But what does that actually mean? To answer that question, we'll have to learn a little bit about neuroscience, the study of the brain and nervous system. The brain is your body's control center. It processes information to and from your senses and manages vital and voluntary actions like breathing or keeping a regular heartbeat. It enables you to run and play, learn new facts and ideas, and feel a wide range of emotions. To do all of these jobs, your brain contains many different parts. Each part is focused on a specific function, like movement, decision-making, memory, pretty much everything. The brain transmits information throughout the body using a system of interconnected nerve cells called neurons. Chemical messengers called neurotransmitters carefully move the information from one neuron to the next. Spoiler alert, these messengers play a key role in the way alcohol affects the brain. But hang on, we're getting there. Now, neurotransmitters can either be excitatory, meaning they stimulate brain activity, or inhibitory, meaning they slow down brain activity. To keep its operations going smoothly, the brain has to maintain a careful chemical balance between these two types of neurotransmitters. Now let's see what happens when you introduce alcohol to this finely tuned system. To start, Alcohol acts as an agonist, or booster, to certain chemicals in the brain's internal reward system. That's what can give people the relaxed feeling you may have heard about. But alcohol also acts as an agonist to inhibitory neurotransmitters, increasing their ability to slow down brain functions. Simultaneously, it acts as an antagonist to excitatory neurotransmitters, decreasing their ability to stimulate brain activity. You can probably guess what happens when you combine ramped up inhibitory neurotransmitters with doled down excitatory neurotransmitters. All of your brain's different parts and functions become super slowed down, which can cause a wide range of physical, mental, and emotional effects. For example, if too much alcohol hits your cerebellum, which is important for coordination, you might lose your balance and fall. If alcohol impairs your hippocampus where memories are made, you might have a hard time holding on to new information, like someone's name you just met or where you left your phone. And when alcohol hits your cerebral cortex, which has an important role in feelings and decisions, you may find it hard to control your emotions and get very sad or very angry for apparently no reason. Basically, as alcohol mixes with the different parts of your brain, it makes it a lot harder for them to do their specific jobs. In time, these short-term effects of alcohol wear off as alcohol leaves the system, though a drinker may experience a sick feeling known as a hangover the next day. But if a person continues drinking too much, it can have serious long-term effects. The brain will begin to chemically compensate for the way alcohol affects it, and in time, will start to rely on alcohol to function normally. This can lead to dependency, addiction, and other serious health problems. As a young person with a still-developing brain, alcohol can have a stronger effect on you than on adults. Learning the facts can help you make healthy decisions. So say yes to a healthy lifestyle and no to underage drinking. To learn more, visit asklistenlearn.org.